What is that? It's really cool. Oh, that's so weird. Because you would think looking at a structure like that, that it's like made out of like brick. But like that looks like solid rock. So is it natural? The real question is how am I going to get across this creek? <laughs> so I tried looking for a place to cross for like the last mile and I couldn't find one. And then I finally find this beautiful bridge. This is an ATV trail. Now in this national forest, it's actually illegal to go off trail in a motorized vehicle, which means because <laughs> this is my, you know, lo mode of locomotion, let's say I can just go off trail. And that's exactly what I plan on doing. I'm gonna go hang out, hang out up there. As far as that structure from earlier, I'm definitely gonna have to get some waders and then just cross that creek. I definitely need to come back and explore that at some point. But for now, I'm just gonna explore these beautiful woods. guys so i made it on top of the first hill here my car is just down the hill i want to get up there and i am 99 percent sure there's absolutely no threats to me out here but i will say it is very frustrating the sun is right there <laughs> and so walking towards this tree line and being aware of my surroundings is going to be a little difficult so we'll see how much my sunglasses help but again, these are just the kinds of things that they sound so obvious, but these are the kinds of things you kind of start to begin to realize and become aware of once you start hiking in the wilderness with sort of a, uh, I don't know, tactical mindset, I guess is the best way to put it, but with a mindset of preparedness and with being aware of your environment, I'm working a lot on just awareness in general, aware of my surroundings, aware of the sounds I make, which obviously me talking into a camera <laughs> is not helping disguise anything, but you get the idea. I'm having a blast, man. It's so freaking awesome out here. Some of the more keen-eyed viewers might have noticed I have a new toy. You'll notice here at Schizo Saint, I have a new optic on my gun every expedition. I am always trying to find the best setup and I think I might have got it. This is the Vortex 5X Prism. I'm not gonna be doing a review of this optic, maybe in the far future, but I think the Prince of Belarus, he's already made the definitive review for this optic. Uh, essentially, uh, I get a lot of the benefits of say something like an ACOG in a lighter package. Granted, the illumination is not really worth anything as far as I can tell uh, that the ACOG has this beat. But in just about every other way, this thing is, dare I say, superior? Why is that? One is that it is, is, is lighter than an ACOG. The 4X ACOG, I believe, weighs about 16 ounces. This weighs 11, and it has 5X magnification as opposed to the traditional ACOG which has only four. I will say the mount is not terribly impressive and I will be getting a back sweat mount from Primary Arms and that will bring uh, the optic even further back and make the eye relief that much more usable. Uh, it's totally natural for me to bring up the optic to my eye and look at something. I've been using this to observe my surrounding area. It works very well. I'm very happy with the 5X Prism from Vortex. This is a very good buy so far. Now, keep in mind, this is my first hike with it. 
It's been durable so far, but someday it might break, in which case my recommendation would obviously go away. It can also mount a 1X red dot, which I think is necessary in order for this to be a completely usable package. Then you would have basically every range from one to 500 yards completely nailed down. Vortex does make a red dot for this, obviously. Um, I don't know, I'm not that interested in it. There is an adapter you can get so that you can run either an RMR or a Hollow Sun. I'm more interested in the Hollow Sun. The Hollow Sun seems like a far more modern optic and better optic compared to the RMR, which I know it sounds weird to say, but I mean, all you have to do is compare the specs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Hollow Sun seems a lot better. So maybe I'll be running a Hollow Sun. Maybe I'll run a Vortex Micro. We'll see what I end up doing. But Overall, I am extremely happy with this optic, and this I plan on keeping on my gun for a very long time. Something else about the Vortex, it's so cool. You can notice way out there, right <laughs> where my finger is. That's um, obviously part of the mountain range that I'm in right now. With the Vortex 5X, I'm able to see what I think is cattle all the way out there. Obviously with the naked eye, even with my zoomed in phone camera, I, uh, I obviously can't see any cattle. But with an optic that I can fit in the size of my palm, <laughs> I can make out cattle. I mean, if you are looking to build out a gun that you think you might have to hike around with, either for fun or for emergencies or whatever, the Vortex 5X so far is looking really good. Again, this isn't a review. Um, but so far it's looking great, so. All right, I apologize, it's a little windy, but see this like, let me get my, see that black dot? Oh, my phone, my finger ruined the focus. There is a black dot out there that just looks like a tree, but through the vortex, I can 100% discern that that is cattle. Now keep in mind, the eye box on this thing is, it is restrictive, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't want to play that off too much because yeah, it does take some getting used to, but I can absolutely tell that that is cattle. So obviously it's spooky season and I love sharing scary stories. I need to do another armed expedition tales. So uh, if you guys have any scary story recommendations at all, whether they be from the internet or maybe just a family story you have, I am more than happy to share it. Go ahead and leave it in the comments. If you want to go into the Discord and give me the full story, I'll leave my Discord open. Uh, the link to that will be in the description. So if you have any scary stories you would like me to share, maybe I'll share like three or four just in one big video. I'll do a hike at nighttime, you know, just to really bring in the scoop, the spooky vibes. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys uh, have to, to have to share. So go ahead, leave a comment, tell me your scary stories, and I'd be more than happy to to uh, share them in the next video. Man, isn't it just cool up here? So I'm camping up up here, you know, just eating food. And here's where my mind goes. Say like you, me and my family had for whatever reason, during the WROL, without rule of law, <laughs> during, um, you know, the SHTF, whatever. Let's say we had a camp back there. And that's where we slept, that's where we ate, that's where we lived, you know. I was thinking, how would we secure this mountain valley? How would we do that? And the way you would do it, you would have a guy basically where I am. You'd have a guy over there on that mountain peak. Some guy up there, some guy over there, maybe someone on that ridge. And if you guys had good optics, you could secure this whole stretch of valley with like six people. Maybe, you know, 5.56 five, I'm sure would be fine, but you might want to up it up to 308, but I mean, you could reasonably secure <laughs> this whole stretch of road with like six dudes with radios and like, you know, see that truck down there? Obviously, perfectly normal guy right now, totally decent person, but in the WRL, maybe that's someone that means you harm and you guys can document who's traveling through your mountain, right? Who's traveling through the road and the path that leads to your camp? So I don't know, it's just kind of interesting. Like when you start thinking about what might be necessary after some kind of collapse, it really gets you thinking and you come up with all sorts of fun LARP scenarios. Like that would be a totally decent 
thing to practice with a buddy. Like maybe, you know, you're in a similar kind of place. There's a mountain there, a mountain there, and a road. You have your buddy go up there with the spotting scope. You come up here with the spotting scope and you can just spend the afternoon keeping track of who comes through, what direction they're coming from, all that. And what you're practicing is data gathering. Cause like as cool as ARs are and stuff like that, gathering data is what's gonna keep you alive in a situation like that. So maybe it's worth getting a really good spotting scope, maybe a drone with rechargeable batteries and a way of recharging them. I don't know, it's just kind of interesting to think about what kind of tools you, you're gonna want after the apocalypse begins, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, just a thought. Thanks so much for watching, guys. It is so great up here. I am definitely returning to this forest in the future. We need to investigate that structure, you know what I mean? I'll uh, do some inter research on the internet, see if I find anything, but until next time, guys, get out there, go train, go shoot, have fun, and enjoy your public lands. Take it easy and have a wonderful, wonderful day.